blockchain called Link. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start by explaining kind of the, the reasons why I wanted to, to build it in, in the first place. Um, so the, the general purpose is to build decentralized publication apps such as Twitter or Reddit, or Medium, Instagram, YouTube, uh, but without any company owning these, these platforms. Um, so to highlight some of the problems with the, the current situation, so um, there was some news last year where the, the, the CEO of, of Reddit he uh, he admitted that he he changed some some posts that someone else had made on Reddit, um, which of course is kind of shocking because you know you, you you want to trust the platform that you know if you publish something, the people running that platform aren't, aren't just going to come in and, and change it, um, and of course maybe this was a, a one off event and he he apologized, but of course. If this was on the blockchain, then this this could not happen in in the first place. Um, <clears throat> so another example, um, you know, there's a a subreddit called called India, and it's it's very popular. Um, but according to this blog post, it's uh, it has a, a very strong left wing bias. But people don't uh, don't realize that this is kind of uh, um, on, on purpose. So the, the moderators of this subreddit, they, if someone makes a post which is more leaning to the right, then they will delete it. And if it's more on the left, they will allow it to stay up. But people looking at the subreddit, they, they are not aware of this. So they just think, well, everyone's posting about left-wing issues. Um, and of course, it's fine to want to have your, your left-wing filter bubble or your right-wing filter bubble um, but you, you want to know which filter bubble you're in. Um, so this is one of the things that, that's wrong with, with Reddit. You, um, you have these, these moderators that have their own thing they want to do, and the people using the, the subreddit aren't necessarily aware of, of what's happening with, with that process. Um, another example, um, there was... Uh, a, a conservative personality called called Milo. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's English, um, but he was being he was behaving very badly on Twitter, and then Twitter actually they they banned him completely. Um, you know, which in a way is fair enough because you know Twitter run the platform. They want to look after people using the platform, but on the other hand, it it, it should almost be it's it's like using the internet. No one should be cut off from using the internet, and so no one should be cut off from being able to to post their messages. Um, perhaps it would be more appropriate that if someone is running a, a filter bubble that people are are using, maybe that filter bubble would ban Milo. But he should still be able to publish, and then um, everyone can should be able to decide which, if, if they want to use a filter bubble where he is allowed to participate or not. Um, so this is this is one of the problems with having companies run these platforms where they they should be autonomous and and on the blockchain. Um, another example was with the the technology subreddit. So it turned out that they were automatically banning any posts that contained the words anonymous, Bitcoin, Comcast, net neutrality, NSA, or Snowden. Um, and, and this just happens uh, in, in a way that most people aren't even aware that, that these, these posts are, are just being deleted automatically. Um, so th this is the sort of thing I would want to, uh, to do better. We need to have transparency over what... Um, you know what people are allowed to, to be talking about, um, and then of course, for those of you who are familiar with with Bitcoin, we have the the Bitcoin subreddit, and uh, this has been highly controversial for um, a couple of years. But according to many people, the the Bitcoin subreddit is heavily censored. Um, and then that is why the, uh, the BTC subreddit was set up as an alternative. Um, but of course, with the new subreddit, the, it doesn't take all the content from the old subreddit. So it started from, from scratch. If you want to to be communicating with both of these communities, you have to publish to Bitcoin and you have to publish to, to, B, to, to BTC. 
what, what should really happen is that you can just publish to the Bitcoin topic and then you could maybe have two different filter bubbles and people can choose which, which one they want. Um, so that, that's the problem that I want to solve. And two years ago, almost, you know, almost to the day, I, I read this great blog post on TechDirt. And he's kind of talking about this, this problem I've, I've just been mentioning. And what he says is that we actually, instead of having platforms, we should have protocols. So we should have a, an open Reddit post protocol or an open tweet protocol. Um, and this is something I've been thinking about for, for a long time. And then when he published this post, I was thinking, great, this is exactly what I've, I've been wanting to build. And Link is basically my, my attempt to build what, uh, what Mike Masnick is talking about in, in this blog post. <coughs> so uh, th this is where I've got to so far. So it's the blockchain is live. It's just a, a documentation website. I haven't made a, a, an amazing branding website to sell it it's still uh it's still in a, a bootstrapping phase um but it is it is operational so we have um um you know we have a, a network that is operational so you can synchronize with the, the blockchain you can um you can publish transactions it's actually it's it's a, a clone of Ethereum, so anything that you can do with Ethereum, you, you can also do it with, with Link. Um, so we have uh, my, my blog site hosted on, on Medium. Um, um, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Reddit, um, I'm on Gitter. We, we have a, a block explorer, although... Um, James will be talking about the new Block Explorer, which will be um, appearing very soon. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, about how, how the how the technology actually works. Um, so whenever Ethereum switched on, um, I think it must be almost two years ago. So I was uh, I was teaching myself Solidity the the pro programming language for, for writing smart contracts. And the thing I kept trying to do was thinking, how, how can I put content into, into the blockchain so I can build this sort of platform? So I, I created this, uh, this smart contract called Blob Store. Um, blob is actually a technical term for binary large object. And this smart contract has evolved over the past two years. It's taken on many different forms. Um, and finally, I'm, I'm happy with, with how it works. Um, so it actually, it, it uses IPFS for the actual storage of content, but every, every piece of content stored on link has to, to be put into the, the blob store contract. Um, so let me tell you how, or what, what the properties of it are. So uh, when you publish something and then you, you put it into blob store, all that goes into a block, on, on the blockchain, and then every block is timestamped, so you know uh, when when someone published a message, and that's that's recorded forever. So that's an important concept. Um, it's it's world readable. Um, so with with Link, I'm specifically targeting um, you, if if you want to publish something, it's available for for anybody to read. So if you want to have private Facebook groups or Slack, that's that's an entirely different problem space. I'm not attempting to do to do private communication. Um, it's it's immutable, so you can, depending how you've configured your piece of content, you can retract your content. But of course, um, you know every transaction on the blockchain is stored forever, and so someone will be able to go and find that transaction and then find the, the IPFS hash of what you've published. So uh, you, can't, you can't really delete. Once you've published, you can't take it back. Um, but of course, that's the same with, with Twitter at the moment and, and Reddit because uh, the Internet Archive are archiving everything anyway. So um, that's, that's pretty much the same. 
Um, it can be revision. So if, if you imagine you're, uh, you're publishing a tweet or a Reddit post and then you want to you know, edit it, make a small modification, so you can do that with, with Blob Store. Um, but it will, it can be forced to, to maintain a revision history. So if someone says one thing and then changes it and then you think, oh, well, you know, you're changing what you said, you can, you can look, look at the history and see what, what they said before. Um, every, every piece of content can have an owner. Um, and then this is important for obviously deciding who can, um, you know, modify content, create new revisions, and if you put a piece of content into your feed, you want to check that you know they actually made that piece of content in, in the first place. Um, so each each blob, each piece of content can be configurable, it can be updatable, you can enforce revisions, you, it can be retractable, and it can be transferable, so you can have a piece of content and transfer it to another, another user. Um, so if, let's say you're you have something like a decentralized Reddit, you would want to check that every piece of content that is published, if it is updatable, you would also say it has to be enforcing revisions. Um, if you try to publish a piece of content that uh, is not enforcing re revisions, then you would just, uh, you would not allow that piece of content to, to be published. Um, so only the bare minimum is stored in contract states. We don't have any any state sharding at the moment with Ethereum blockchain. So every every full node stores the whole state, but that's just the bare minimum. The content itself is stored in IPFS, which is kind of like uh, it's like HTTP, except that um, you know any piece of content will automatically move around the network to whoever wants to hold on to it. Um, it's actually it's. It's much more scalable than HTTP because it's um, it's a, a decentralized technology. Um, and then with Blob Store, it's designed to be upgradable. So in the future, you, you'll be able to use it with something other than than IPFS. And I've, I've written unit tests for all the the functionality. So it's it's a very robust piece of software. So every piece of content gets a, a Blob ID, um, and depending if you're accessing it from within a smart contract or externally, there's a, a short version and, and a long version. Um, so that, that is deployed on, on link blockchain. So that's kind of a key, a key component. But then if you want to publish something, um, you have to have some sort of system of, of content types. So for example, you could have an image, you could have a tweet, you could have a Reddit post, you could have your your user profile, you could have your business information, um, all kinds of different content. And your application, if, if, you, uh, if your application is looking at a piece of content, it needs to be able to identify uh, what sort of content that is and then be able to check if, if it knows how to render that content. And because the, the type system is hierarchical, so there's actually, there's just a root content type and then it's like a tree. So every, every piece of content is inherited from another piece of content. So if an application is looking at a video and the video is of like video 2.0, but it doesn't know how to use video 2.0, it would then go, go up the hierarchy and then discover that video 2 is inherited from, from video 1.0 and it will know how to read video 1.0. So you can have old software that's able to, to use content, which is using new, new content types. Um, another example would be for uh, a media publication, like the, the, the New York Times, for example. It could take the, the standard story type that everybody is using, but then it could extend that content type and add in some, some custom fields. So then their, their, their proprietary app could then it can take more information out of the content than just your standard sort of RSS reader equivalent sort of standard um, news reading application. Um, and every every piece of content, every sorry, every content type will be described with um, a schema. So I wrote a blog post about this as well. Um, 
So there's a language called protocol buffers created by Google. So this is when you, when you create a content type, you define the specification of all the fields in your content type. And then um, when you're publishing your content, it will be encoded into a tight binary format. Then it gets compressed with, with Broadly, which is also created by Google. It's a very effective compression algorithm for text. And then it gets put into IPFS. And then everyone who is subscribed to you will then, they will, everything will just be stored on everyone's device. So if, um, if you're subscribed to a user or a topic, everything that user publishes, everything in that topic will, uh, will be on your device. So you can even access it offline. Uh, so that's that's the basic idea. There's a lot more to, to build out, but uh, the main thing I want to build is a, a, a decentralized Twitter. You know, once I have that up and running, then that'll be a great a great demonstration. Um, but there's a few more things I can talk about. One question would be: so why is Link being deployed on Ethereum or Ethereum Classic? Um, so my, my ex explanation for this is, if you're familiar, there was uh, a year ago, there was a smart contract called the DAO on, on Ethereum. And it had $150 million stored in it. And then this, this contract got hacked. And of course, everyone starts freaking out. And then, you know, some people, they want to rescue the funds. And other people say, well, this is against what you're supposed to do with the blockchain. It's supposed to be immutable. Um, so what, what's the way forward? So what happened was uh, there was a hard fork and then that the hard fork is called Ethereum and then the version that didn't have the hard fork is called Ethereum Classic. Um, and I, you know, whenever this happened for, for about two weeks, I couldn't decide what, what I thought about this. You know, my whole, uh, you know, thinking about how we're going to proceed with the blockchain was, you know, Ethereum makes so much sense. We have a big monolithic blockchain. And then this event completely, uh, uh, you know, pushed me to one side. I didn't know what I thought about it. But eventually I realized that there is a better way. We need, um, we need lots of smaller blockchains. We need a federated blockchain system. Um, so at, at the time, I wrote uh, a blog post about this, um, just explaining how um, it's my old website. Um, so yeah, 25th of July 2016, um, I was saying we, we should have federated blockchains. So you, you can have native tokens. It's it's like a form of sharding instead of putting all the dApps on one blockchain, sharing the same space. If you have lots of blockchains, then that's like a form of sharding. Um, but the main advantage is if you need to, to perform a hard fork, every, all, all software has bugs. Every blockchain has had uh, critical problems that needed to be fixed. Even Bitcoin had several critical vulnerabilities that needed hard forks to be fixed. Um, so if, if you're deploying a piece of software on a, on a blockchain, you want to be able to have a hard fork to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if you're if you sharing that blockchain with everybody else, then you're not going to be able to do a hard fork because everyone else doesn't care about you. Um, so if you have smaller blockchains, that, that little community where they all have the same interest, they, of course, will want to have a hard fork to fix their their bug. Um, but then if, there, there are disadvantages. You, you know, for example, with Link, I'm starting from scratch. I don't have a large hash rate, and that's for, for the mining. So that decreases network security. Um, so in, in the long term, there are, there are better solutions. Um, in this blog post, I just outlined how, um, how, how that can work. Um, but there are people innovating in this space. So with, with Polkadot, it's a way of having uh, blockchains share the, the mining and the network security and having inter-blockchain communication. Um, Ardor is doing something similar. And then with, with Definity, the idea is you have a, a monolithic blockchain, but there is a, a democratic system built in. So if you want to have a hard fork, there is a means by which consensus can be achieved to actually implement a hard fork. 
Um, but these these technologies don't uh, don't really exist yet. So in the meantime, I've created a clone of Ethereum to, to, for to to run Link, and you know maybe in the future that will be connected to other blockchains with Polkadot. Um, I don't know what will happen in the future, but in the meantime, it's it's just uh, an independent blockchain. Um, so if if you want to obtain some link, so link is the the crypto fuel for the link blockchain. It is not actively trading, um, but you can mine it. And at the moment, even with a CPU, you can actually get hold of quite a lot of link. Um, there is one guy who will switch on his GPU from time to time, and then he will dominate the network. But he doesn't have it running all the time. Um, but I'm, I want to get a lot more GPU miners because once we have more GPU miners, then we can get on an, an exchange, and that's obviously important for the whole, um, the whole project. Um, so if, if you're a miner, um, it might be a good opportunity to start mining Link, but you won't be able to sell it for you know, maybe, maybe weeks or months, but it's, it's a good opportunity. Uh, but you can also um, purchase Link from, from me. So I'm selling Link at a price of one US penny per Link at the moment. And I, I've sold um, several thousand dollars worth of Link already. Um, and that's, that, that is increasing. Um, so I will have to, to put the price up eventually. And then once it's on an exchange, I will, I will sell my Link on the exchange. Um, so this, this kind of brings us on to um, uh, how is Link's crowdfund mechanism different from an ICO? So I didn't do an ICO. The way this is happening at the moment, you know, some of these companies, they're making, uh, you know, they, they will raise $150 million, uh, having not really built anything yet. Um, uh, there's a new one called, called Bancor. They... They just raised 150 million dollars. I, I did this presentation in, in Bangkok a few weeks ago, and the the marketing guy from from Bancor was there, um, and he's he's an impressive marketer. Um, so it's not an ICO. So here I kind of I'm just talking about how ICOs work, but the problem is they get all the money, and then they uh, you know where is the incentive for them to then to spend their you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to actually build the product. Um, so I did it. I did it a, a different way. So what happens is when I created the the Genesis block for Link Blockchain, it pre-allocated um, five years of mining into a smart contract, and then over two thousand days, this uh, all of this Link is gradually released to me to sell. Um, you want to take a picture? <laughs> Um, so here's the, here's the graphs. Um, yeah, project revenue of 55 million link, five years of mining is pre-allocated into the revenue smart contract and it releases it over 2000 days. So this, um, and that's a similar pre-allocation to Ethereum actually. So, um, let me see if I can get the whole, um, graph on this little screen. Oh Yeah. Okay, um, so with with Ethereum, the block reward is constant, but as a proportion of what has already been mined, it's always it's always going down. So the green line is the block reward. The blue line is what I'm getting paid. So I am financially incentivized to reinvest the link into making the the link ecosystem even better because then the link I get later on will then be worth more. So that's the, the way that I have economically incentivized myself to, to build the product. Um, so every, every 200 days, the, the rate at which the link is released to me goes down. So this is the cumulative issuance. So the blue is what has been released uh, to me directly through the revenue smart contract, and then the green is the standard uh, mining reward. Um, so after 2,000 days, I no longer get paid any more by the blockchain, and then it's the standard uh, Ethereum, Ethereum straight line. And then uh, 
you can work out the inflation fairly easily. So this is actually after the crowdfund is over. Um, just as more uh, link is released, then um, you know compared to how much is already being produced, so the inflation rate is is gradually going down. And then this is actually uh, a DAP. This is a distributed app, so it's talking to the revenue smart contract. Um, at the bottom, we can see some information. So um, I started the the blockchain and the revenue smart contract April 27th, so it will end uh, October 18th, 2022. Um, so in terms of the time, this is day 78 out of 2,000 days. And then in terms of the how much has been released. So almost 4 million link has been released to me. So 7% uh, of the total link has been released, uh, but the rest of it will take until uh, 2022. So that, that was my alternative to, to creating an, an ICO. Um, and one of the big announcements I hope to have very soon is integration with the Coinami wallet. So it's, it's a wallet for Android that supports a huge number of coins. Um, so I've, I've been talking to them, um, and I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm hiring I'm, I'm hiring them to to add Link to to the wallet. And it's at the moment it's just an Android, but they're going to be releasing it uh, multi-platform, um, Android, um, iPhone, and uh, also on on the desktop. So. Very soon, uh, Link will be featured on, on this list. And it's actually, it's, it's a much better wallet than Jax. It works much better and uh, has much more coins. Um, <clears throat> I do want to get on an exchange. Um, this exchange has the most coins. Um, and there is a system where you can vote for which, uh, which coin gets added next. So I just, uh, I got my, my free vote of one, but you can actually, uh, it comes down to how much Bitcoin is donated. Um, every week they add another coin. They have a lot of coin. A lot of people want to add their coin. Um, the people who uh, didn't, who came second last week, who didn't get added last week, uh, <laughs> they had actually donated uh, $10,000 and that wasn't enough. So the people who did get in paid even more. Um, so either I pay to get on, on CCEX, or I think actually with Bittrex, I think it's more of a fixed fee of, of three Bitcoin. So um, it looks like, like Bittrex will actually be the, the first exchange we get on, but somehow I will get on, on an exchange. Um, so that's, uh, that's really the, the project as it, as it stands. Um, one of the first things I did when, when people started buying Link from me, I wanted to reinvest it straight away. So uh, I, I hired James to, uh, to implement a new block explorer for uh, Link and actually all, all Ethereum blockchains. So he's going to talk about that in, in a few minutes. Um, so are, are there any uh, any any questions for for me? Yes. <laughs> What's the utility of the link token? Because uh, they're saying that coins usually have two kinds of value parts: one being the utility, and the other one the speculative one. Mm -hmm. What's the utility? Uh, so every time you publish something, you have to broadcast a transaction, and then therefore you need to pay a transaction fee. So if, if you have a centralized company running the platform, you know, they will let you pay you know, to publish for free. If you're publishing directly on the blockchain, you will have to make a small micropayment unless someone makes an app where uh, they pay the fee for you and then the app has advertising or something built in. Um, the other feature there will be is there will be an anti-spam mechanism where um, you can destroy Link in whenever you publish something, you can destroy some link in association with that piece of content. You can you can burn some link, uh, 
And that, ju- that will be an anti-spam mechanism. That is proof that you're willing to spend a certain amount of money to publish a piece of content. And then people receiving content will then say, well, I only want to uh, synchronize content on my device if people have paid enough enough link. So that that is the, the utility. Um, and so the economists will tell you that based on the the velocity of money, there is a minimum price that Link will have to have in order to function. But then on top of that, you have speculators who will, uh, if they think that Link will go up in value in future, then they will drive up the price by by buying more in, in the short term. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, there are also these, these other similar applications which are being developed on the, uh, the Ethereum blockchain itself. Mm-hmm. Cash out one, right? So mm-hmm. uh, I think people like Arcade City also are trying to go in that sort of direction. So you have decided to actually fork Ethereum and do your own blockchain. So there are the security issues, obviously, right? Blockchain is, I mean, Ethereum itself would be non sweep all secure until you can garner enough hash rate as well. So what would have been your, your, your main uh, uh, dis- uh, driving uh, factor in, in wanting to develop on your own blockchain? One, and the other question, just a very, very brief one, is uh, could Link be traded on Ether Delta, for instance? Um, so I, I think Ether Delta is uh, that's that's a trading smart contract on, on Ethereum. Um, so and, you know, I, I really like the idea of, of these autonomous exchanges. And of course, one of the advantages of Ethereum is the, the network effect. So you can create all these tokens on Ethereum and then there's the potential for autonomous trading. Um, and so this, again, at the moment, this is one of the disadvantages of, of having uh, a separate blockchain. Um, but conceivably, what could happen is um, you can use side chains. So you can actually you can teleport assets between blockchains. So um, in the future, I think this will happen with, with a lot of blockchains. You will be able to send a link into a smart contract that will effectively lock up the link. And then you provide a cryptographic proof of that to another blockchain on, on the Ethereum main chain. And it will then release a token, which is sort of a, um, you know, it, it would be link on, on Ethereum. And then now, I understand it even like Golem is not a, a purely ERC20 token. Mm-hmm. They have this mechanism where you, you translate it into something that is then tradable on Ether Delta. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, not so familiar with how the, the Golem token works. Um, but I, I think there, there is a lot of scope, even with, with federated blockchains, to be able to, um, to trade tokens in, in an, an autonomous manner. Um, and you know, coming back to the the broader question of you know why why is Link on uh, on, on an independent blockchain, um, and a lot of a lot of people in Ethereum have have a big problem with this because their whole mindset is that you know they they want Ether to go up in value, and so everything should be on the Ethereum blockchain. And because because I am not building it on Ethereum, then I am not contributing to the price of Ether. Uh, I'm contributing to the, the the price of Link, but I just I I fundamentally disagree with this this model of having a monolithic blockchain with a very wide remit. Um, I think Ethereum is a house of cards, and there are, there will be more problems like the DAO. There will be more black swan events, and there will there will be uncontained. You know, there will be major problems, and then people will. They will want to fork, and then they, they can't hard fork, or maybe there will be another hard fork, and there will be another war. Um, and I, so I would never deploy Link on, on the Ethereum main chain, because I don't want to be a part of that. If I, if I need to hard fork Link, or if the community, if the Link community wants to hard fork Link, then we can do that. We have that power. If we were on Ethereum, then we couldn't. Um, so it's it's good for Link in that regard to be on an independent blockchain, and also I 
I fundamentally believe in the idea of, of federated blockchains as opposed to having one one blockchain to, to rule them all. Yep. Uh, so uh, you're saying uh, if, it was, if it was easy to uh, gain consensus for a platform on a small on a small chain, then doesn't that also say it's it'd be easy to censor certain content because you have a, a smaller group of a small number of participants? It would be easy. Well, it, it, it still it, it comes it comes down to the will of the miners in in the in the link community, the miners that are that are mining link. Um, but for example, the miners are it's still a public chain. Yeah, it's it, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, so, I, I mean, so what what do you mean by federated? Sort of, as I know, federated means. Uh, well, it's it, it's federated in that um, it's it's an independent chain. It's still a public chain, but the the idea the the concept of federated is that we we sh I think we should have lots of blockchains instead of one. Lots. Yeah, um, and you know f you know if like let's say you know a year or two from now the link community is vibrant. Everybody's publishing on the platform and then one day I say uh, we, we need to censor something um, you know the community is not going to do what I tell them to do you know um, on the other hand if there is a critical bug in a very popular smart contract and it can't be fixed and I say to the community right I think we need to hard fork to fix this and everybody uses this smart contract like there's no point in link, in link existing unless we fix this problem then everybody will be like, "Yeah, okay, let's fix let's fix that problem." Um, there was a problem with, with Bitcoin years ago, where you know someone managed to allocate themselves like billions of Bitcoin because they find a bug in, in in the blockchain, and so of course everyone's like, "Well, okay, this is a critical vulnerability, so let's fix that problem." Um, but then you know, with with Mt. Gox losing all the funds, then the, the consensus wasn't there to to fix that problem. So it, it comes down, down to what the, the community wants to happen. But having, having a small remit is much more effective because then you can actually make decisions. Whereas with, with Ethereum, you know, everything is on Ethereum and then you're never going to be able to you know, have a hard fork without um, everyone, everyone getting mad about it. So, yeah, that's... Do you have a POC... Twitter like user interface works or not 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 yet. Um, so I'm I'm just building it step by step. I'm I'm building protocols. Um, so for example, I would build a, a smart contract for feeds. So every time you publish a piece of content, that would go into your feed. There would be a smart contract for voting on on content or liking content or replying to content. Um, that that's all actually. Pretty straightforward for me to build with with with, with Solidity, the, the programming language, um, and then I will build APIs. I will build like little little mock-up applications. But then to make the uh, the impressive kind of uh, app that will actually show off what is happening, then um, I will probably ask James to to do some more front-end work to make a a great uh, a, a great demo application. And, and one of the one of the advantages is like with with Twitter, for example, people are quite often even in my feed they'll be asking Twitter it's like why can't you change it to work this way? Why can't it work that way? And okay, you know, Twitter has an API, Reddit has an API, but you know, Twitter fundamentally works in a certain way, and you can't change that. If you want to make a new Twitter, you have to start from scratch with no content. With, with this system, if people are already using the decentralized link and then, you know, a decentralized Twitter, and then someone wants to uh, make another app that works in a different way, has a different uh, moderation system, another voting algorithm, they can take all that existing content that's already been published and then come up with a new algorithm, a new system, a new app, um, and create a new filter bubble for, for the existing content. And at the moment, you you can't do that because all of the content, although it's publicly available, it's still locked up in in these in these platforms. Then you need like a like a, like a 
IVFS to the browser built in wallet so that you don't really see when you publish a tweet that you're paying the gas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, to start with, you will have to to run your own node, and then you know you will you'll load up the app in your web browser. It'll talk to the node, but there's a lot of um, a lot of improvements are being made at, at the moment in terms of integrating uh, Ethereum into the web browser. So there's there's a plugin for um, for Chrome, and it'll be available for Firefox soon. Um, called called MetaMask, and that's just a way of being able to enable um, your web browser to run Web3 applications directly. Um, IPFS can run in JavaScript, and also the uh, JavaScript light, light client functionality will be available for Ethereum as well. So eventually, it'll just be a JavaScript app, actually, and it'll just run in your web browser. Later on, I want to have a content type in link, which is a content type of app. So you will actually be able to write an app and then deploy the app to link blockchain. And then so the app will actually become a piece of content in, in itself. Do you have any kind of timeline as to when maybe like an Amazon or the Beta will be available for people to play Well, it's, it's already running. And so I'm, I'm developing it all the time. I blog about everything I do. So it's totally transparent. Um, so I, I would think within um, like within three months we'll actually have a like a, a functioning Twitter clone of of some sort. But it is um, it is it's just an, an evolution. You know, there's no like concrete plan of where we will be in in two or three years time. Um, any any other questions? Made. Yeah. Uh, the IPFS, uh, which is used to store the actual content you mentioned, yeah. uh, is hosted by a number of uh, people, I mm -hmm. guess, or nodes. Mm -hmm. These are not necessarily the same like the link nodes, or are they? The well, t t typically, if you're running like a, a link full node, um, then you would be synchronizing the blockchain and storing. IPFS content that's published on Link. Um, so if um, if you're subscribing to content, uh, well, in, in IPFS you have this concept called pinning. So you can pin a piece of content to your device, then your device will always store that piece of content and it will share it to others if, if they require it. So if you subscribe to a person or a topic, then anything published um, in, you know, from that person or that topic, provided they've burned enough link for the anti-spam mechanism, then that will be pinned on your, on, on your device. Um, if you have no followers or you're publishing to a topic that uh, no one is listening to and you want to publish and then you want to switch off your device, then you will need a way to ensure that this content is going to be out, out there for other people to get if they want to get it later. Um, but that's actually a very standard problem with IPFS. So there's a lot of systems like Filecoin, for example, where you can, you can pay the network to store IPFS content. And then that'll just work the same for, for link content as well. So you plan to purchase external storage even through the link? Um, well, not, not necessarily. Um, to begin with, I will have a, a daemon running on my server that will just store all content that is stored on Link. But of course, that is not scalable in, in the long term. Um, but if uh, it, it comes down to the person who's publishing. So if they are publishing and no one is subscribed, then they will want to pay some additional fee to make sure that that content stays live on, on the network. Yeah. Any any other questions? What time is it? Um, okay. Well, it's it's only twenty to nine, so we're still okay for time. Um, any any other questions for me, or shall we? Just, yeah. Just uh, a question from someone who had to learn about this issue. So we have like steaming, and they are on on on. I think it's a POS uh, consensus based system. So you have opted for basically proof of work, right? Mm -hmm. So could you perhaps expand a little bit on why you chose this part? Yeah, um, proof of stake is just a big unknown for me. 
Um, so in, in effect, the, the Ethereum mainnet is kind of like the, the test net for Link because they're always going to be implementing things ahead of Link. So they, you know, they've got a new release called Metropolis coming up in a few weeks, I think. So they will be implementing a hard fork to make various changes to the, the protocol. And so if, if that works out for them, after a few months, maybe we will have the same hard fork in Link. Um, eventually, the idea with Ethereum is they switch to proof of stake. So if that works, and you know maybe we wait a year and see if it still works, and then I would consider moving Link onto proof of stake. But you know this is years away, so I have no idea where where, where we will be or you know what sort of platform Link should be running on in a few years' time. But it's. So it's it's just a case of, of wait and see, but it's um, you know the Ethereum at the moment is it's very robust technology and proof of stake is not. So um, I'm I'm not interested in it at the moment. Okay, so um, thanks very much for listening, um, and I will turn it over to to James. which I think is why Jonathan hired me uh, and for my great personality. Um, and um, yeah, so I've been working with Jonathan for a couple of weeks on the, on the blockchain project. And um, as part of that project, one of the first things that we did was uh, to develop a, a, what we call an explorer. Um, it was developed for Link, but uh, Link is just an Ethereum uh, blockchain. It's just a clone of Ethereum. Uh, so the client will work with, uh, with any uh, Ethereum blockchain. So what I want to do tonight, um, I don't know, are there any developers here? Yeah, one. <laughs> okay, so I have no idea where you guys are from or your experience with the blockchain or your technical knowledge or, or anything like that. Um, so I'd like to give like a, a technical overview um, of the blockchain and connecting to the blockchain uh, creating a smart contract and uh, calling a method on the smart contract. Okay, so for some people this may be unbelievably boring uh, and simple. Uh, for others, I hope it gives you some sort of idea of what's going on in the blockchain. Technically, I should say um, the blockchain. Once you get into the technical side of the blockchain, uh, it can be an extreme. Uh, rabbit hole. Uh, it becomes very, very mathematical, very quickly, very technical. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully, I can give you uh, some sort of general idea. So, um, the blockchain, I think, is some of you, some of you may know, uh, it runs on nodes, uh, which are servers. Okay, um, and you know, I think I'm not sure how many nodes Ethereum has. Uh, thousands. Uh, at the present moment, we're we're um, getting people to create nodes for the link blockchain. Um, and creating a node uh, is, is very simple. Okay, uh, You can do it with any server or you can do it on, on your laptop. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do right now. There are two main um, programs, I guess, for running a node, running an Ethereum node. Uh, one is called Geth uh, and one is called Parity. Okay? Um, Geth is from the Ethereum Foundation. Parity is, is more um, run by a, a private firm. It's, it's still you know, open source, it's a good product. Generally, I use Geth uh, just because it's uh, a bit easier to use. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I'll try and... Um, so you can see, I mean, this is a, a Windows laptop. Um, Windows actually has the developer's feature, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, Generally, I think you can run it. I'm pretty sure there are ways of running it on Mac and all the rest. It's quite easy. But um, generally, a sort of Linux-type uh, operating system is, is going to make your life uh, a lot easier. And all you want to do, um, there are instructions uh, on, the, on the Link website. Okay? Um, it's, quite, you know, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, you, and as I say, you can run, you can run Geth. Um, just as an Ethereum node, you know, if that's if that's what you want to do. Um, but we're connecting to the Link blockchain, um, and again, you can download the uh, the source or, or the configuration files uh, for the for the Link blockchain. Uh, you just want to run Geth with the Link um, 
uh, config, you know, that you can see here. There's a couple of other options there. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to be demonstrating um, a, client, a browser client um, that's going to connect to the node. Uh, so you need to enable um, cores, if anyone knows anything about cores. Essentially, you need to enable um, outside clients to connect to your to your server. Okay? Um, so that is uh, starting the node uh, with with Link. Um, as has been as has been mentioned, when you run a node, it's uh, a replica of um, of the entire blockchain. Okay. So with this, I mean, I've been running this off and on in the last few days. So you can see it's it, it's synchronizing right now. If you were to start this with um, with Ethereum. It, it's going to take probably a few hours, um, at least, uh, to synchronize with with Ethereum. Okay, um, but you can see, you know, this is uh, this is now running as a node. It's it's connected to the other peers uh, in the network. I think it's synchronized now, um, and from a sort of very a very uh, basic kind of uh, point of view, um, the blockchain consists of mining blocks and then adding them to the chain. Okay. Um, so there are other systems out there uh, that are mining that are that are mining blocks, and this is just tracking each each block uh, that's mined. Okay. Um, so as I say, I'm a I'm a JavaScript developer um, and, and sort of front end developer. Um, I've been working uh, basically to create a client. Uh, this is written in uh, React and Ecmascript 6, if that's of any interest to anyone. <laughs> and um, it's all available on the website. It's all uh, open source on the, um, you know, you can go to the link website and get a link to our GitHub account. Um, and as I say, it's not just for link. You can use this for Ethereum, um, Ethereum nodes, you know, whatever you want to do. And yeah, I mean, if you want to fork it, you know, if you have any sort of contributions or anything like that. Um, so this is, this is now running. Um, okay. Okay. So this is um, it's an explorer for uh, the blockchain, and it's fairly basic. I mean, there's there's uh, um, there are quite a few other sort of clients out there that do roughly the same thing. I think um, in terms of the information here, I think you know I I, I imagine you guys are fairly familiar. Um, this is the latest block that was mined. Uh, it, it's dynamic, so it'll pick up, uh, you know, when the new blocks come along. Um, the hash rate is is the level of difficulty uh, for mining, if that's of anyone. And as Jonathan says, um, I mean, it is possible to mine uh, Link with a CPU at the moment. Um, so you know, if you're interested, it's it's quite easy to do. Um, yeah, and as we all know, Link is going to be worth uh, two hundred dollars uh, a link in, in the near future. So, I mean, it could be, uh, you know, so it could be worthwhile investment. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying. Um, okay, so this is the client, and I just wanted to, um, you know, as I say, I, I I don't know who is interested in the sort of development side of things. Um, this is just a client, okay? It, ju it does just compile down to JavaScript, which runs in the browser. Um, the interaction with the with the node itself um, is via uh, an API, which is published by um, the Ethereum Foundation, uh, which is Web3 API, if anyone's interested. Uh, it's a JavaScript API. API. It's really quite easy to use. Um, you know, if you if you run JavaScript in the browser, you, you need to connect to your node, and you know there's some co configuration and so on. But um, you can quite easily use the API to to talk uh, to the node, to get information from the node, um, and importantly, uh, to um, create and publish contracts uh, to the node. You know if that's what you want to do. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, just qu quickly uh, creating a, a contract. So if you go to uh, ethereum.org, uh, there are, uh, it, the documentation is, is not bad. I mean, it's quite comprehensive on uh, Ethereum. It's, it can be quite out of date. Um, for instance, they tell you that you can compile this um, you know, with the JavaScript console, uh, with, with you know, the Geth JavaScript console. Um, that's not actually possible anymore. I think they uh, deprecated the, the you know, solidity compiler. Um, but there are other compilers out there 
So this is what you're looking at here. Um, as I say, this is just straight from the Ethereum documentation. This is kind of a, a Hello World um, smart contract that they uh, have published on their site. Um, and this is Solidity. So, um, all the language is, is Solidity. So, um, you know, it's, it is a programming language. Uh, I don't know if it's particularly earth shattering. Uh, yeah, there's nothing there. I think if you've got any programming experience at all, um, it's, it's not sort of massively difficult to use, I don't think. Um, and what happens is you have uh, your contract in Solidity, and then um, you need to compile your your contracts. Okay, um, so there. Actually, I think this is already open. So, as I say, you can do it through the command line, um, and you can. Um, I think there are repositories for for the Solidity compiler. Uh, but what you can what you can do, which I think is you know, an easy and, and sort of quick way of doing things um, is you have uh, on the Ethereum site a um, compiler called uh, Remix, okay? And it's very, very simple. Um, you know, you take, your, you take your code. So if I take that out, um, it will automatically update. I mean, obviously, there's nothing there, so it's not, not going to compile. Um, if I put the code back, uh, it, will, it's, it will compile it. Okay, and when I say compile, um, there are two main um, components, which I can't see. Try this one. Okay, so in terms of uh, deploying a smart contract, there are two main things uh, that, uh, that you need. Okay, uh, one is the bytecode. Uh, which is here, and one uh, is the ABI, <laughs> which uh, um, I, I always, always forget what ABI stands for. Um, I can't remember now. Uh, so, uh, 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 application binary interface. Yeah, yeah, okay, so that's it. So, <laughs> as I say, I, I just always uh, forget, forget the, the, uh, what that means, uh, that acronym. Um, but anyway, so you need the application binary interface and you need the bytecode. Uh, in order to deploy your contract uh, to uh, the blockchain, okay? Um, so, again, I mean, this is, you know, uh, this is a client. It's just, I mean, it's running on my, uh, you know, my machine here, but it's interacting, you know, via the web, uh, via the API to the, uh, to the node. Um, and what I've done, I mean, I, I sort of made this little client here, um, this is pre-filled because I figured, you know, Murphy's Law being what it was and this being a presentation that guaranteed if I tried to compile things and put it in here, we'd be here for the next half hour. Um, but anyway, you, you, this is essentially just the ABI and the bytecode uh, that came from, sorry, that came from Remix. Okay? So it's just a copy of this and this uh, that I've put in there. All right? Um, this is a um, Hello World application. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a um, smart contract on the blockchain, okay? And this, this smart contract essentially has uh, one method, uh, which is greet, okay? And um, greet is just going to return, it's going to return the message that you supply to the smart contracts when the contract is created, okay? So there are two steps to this. Number one, uh, we need to create the contracts and deploy it to the to the blockchain, um, and then it's going to be on the block. It's going to be on the blockchain, um, and, and at that point we can get a handle uh, to the smart contract, and we can call our greet method. Okay. So this is so this is the first step, and um, we'll put in a message. So hello. Um, yeah, does everyone everyone follow so far? Everyone's okay. Okay. Um, so, so, and, and just to demonstrate as well. So this is this is uh, you know this is uh, the the node that I set up uh, before. Uh, as you can see, you can see the new blocks uh, coming into the into the blockchain. So when I do this, when I uh, as I say. Create contract is going to um, deploy this smart contract to the blockchain. There is a there is a cost to this. There's a transaction cost, 
um, which is not generally very high, but there is the cost will depend on the complexity of, of the contract. Um, but there, there needs to be a um, there needs to be link essentially or, or ether, if you like, uh, supplied as as part of deploying the contract. So I'm just going to do that if we watch the node. Um, so create contract. Okay, and you'll see that um, you can see here that uh, the, the contract has been deployed uh, to the blockchain. Now, as it stands, that doesn't actually mean anything. That uh, I mean, the contract has been deployed. It hasn't. Um, the transaction has not be, yet been fulfilled. Um, by that, I mean it needs the the transaction needs to be paid for. Okay, um, and once that has occurred, then. Uh, you, uh, the contract is is usable uh, and deployed in the blockchain. So I think you can, you can hopefully you can see this block here. Uh, that was the block uh, that processed the transaction, and uh, and also, as I say, also kept track of uh, of some of the cost in in deploying that contract. And here, um, it's not very exciting. As I say, the, the client now knows uh, that that contract is is uh, valid, you know, on the on the on the blockchain, um, and we now have a, a method, you know, that we can call from the client um, to that smart contract in the blockchain. Makes sense. And all that's going to do, I mean, I'll just show anyone that's interested. Um, where did I put that? I can't remember where I put it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I can't remember where I put it. Um, but anyway, essentially what we have here uh, is a handle uh, to the contract in the smart blockchain. Um, and with that handle, we can call uh, the methods on the blockchain. Um, and that will uh, render, do what that method was supposed to do. Okay. Some yes. Back to the docs, you know? uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you know that block has processed the transaction? Because I don't see anything tagging uh, any description. Yeah, I mean, this is not—it's not hugely descriptive. I mean, all I'm looking at is the the TXS equals two. Um, also, I mean, this client actually—I mean, I'm going to put this into the into this client, um, but the the old client. Um, Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, so you can see. I mean, there, you know, there are the transactions that were processed there. It's very probably the ones which we did right now. Could yes. Oh no. Maybe. I mean, you can you can see you know uh, the the blockchain, the link blockchain is is quite in its um, infancy. You know, I would say um, you can see here. I mean, there are there are very few transactions at the moment. So th those are definitely the ones um, you know that we just that we just did. Um, yeah. So, um, does that does anyone have any questions? Does that is that sort of interesting? Yeah. I mean, because I found, as I say, I'm quite new to this. You know, I've only been doing it uh, really. I mean, as I say, I'm quite experienced developer, but I haven't really worked with the blockchain before. Um, and you just hear all this, you know, smart contracts and, and so on and so on, and, and the actual sort of nuts and bolts of creating a smart contract and you know you've got this smart contract out there on the blockchain somewhere like how do you you know how do you interact with that with that smart contract so uh yeah so that's that's basically it good does anyone have any questions using uh, ethereum js is using ethereum js um well no it's um so what it is it's uh, and it's well documented uh, it's the Web3. Oh, Web3. Web yeah. So, essentially, I mean, to interact with a node, um, you can make um, you can make RPC calls. So you could effectively just use curl or something to, to call into the, into the node. But um, Ethereum, you know, I think the, the API is not massively comprehensive, um, but I think they've done quite a good job uh, in making this you know, quite usable uh, for people. And it's not complete. Solidity, I think creating Solidity contracts is is a, a sort of different um, type of work, you know, because these are things that you cannot change. You know, once this, once smart contract is deployed, 
um, then and it's if you if you've got a ton of bugs in your smart contracts, then there are problems, you know, and you can't you can't change that. So um, you know that's sort of a different um, I don't know level of programming, I suppose. But um, you know it, to to work with uh, with the blockchain and um, to create smart contracts and, and clients, you know that kind of thing um, is quite simple. You know, I mean, it, you know, if you're experienced in JavaScript, uh, then you can do it quite easily. Any other questions? Any general questions? You know about like the the blockchain or you know? I do have a very specific question on technology. Um, yeah. The use cases for this. Okay. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong. So you're trying to create an audit trail for blogging. Okay. So I was thinking, you know, mm -hmm. all right. But I'm okay a blogger. Okay, or anyone. Okay. Well, my interest would be to delete my blogs. If I'm Donald Trump, for instance. Okay. I don't want to be invisible. I want to delete my trace. Okay. On the internet. Um, so what are the use cases really okay, of this? I mean, apart from maybe patenting, okay, you know, your mark. Um, it, it comes down to you, you want to have the, the right to be able to, to publish and to be able to, to build new systems, new, new filter bubbles to right. come up with new ways to display the content that people have, have published. Um, it might be that, you know, maybe the majority of people will be happy with having a, a company run, you know, control all their data, um, but sometimes it matters and sometimes it's very important to have something that's uh, in, independent from from control. Yeah. 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 I mean, it could also be consumed in many, many different ways. You know, if you've got a, a content, you know, as Jonathan says, your, your content um, type, um, you know, it can... Uh, it can be just about anything. It, it can, in, you know, inherit from from other types of content. So you can have a content type that's a tweet, um, but you may that you could add on to that, you know, other attributes, um, you know, different ways of, of interacting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really uh, I don't know if it's a cliche, but um, sort of freeing data and just being able to consume it in any way, shape, or form, you know, that you want. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, for me, like, the way I look at it, um, and Jonathan knows it a lot better than I do, I mean, if you take the New York Times, like, or, or in any other sort of media organization, um, you know, they would be able to have their content out there, but their content would be able to be consumed in numerous other ways uh, by numerous different clients. You know, if that, does that make any, any sense? You know, you could have a, we've got Twitter, um, but there may be different types of Twitter or, you know, different ways maybe of, Maybe there's a you new know, version of a tweet. So maybe we have, yeah. we have GPS coordinates to the tweet. But if you have an older app and it doesn't know how to read the, the GPS coordinates from the tweet, it can still read a tweet that has the GPS coordinates. It'll just ignore those fields that it, it won't understand. So, you know, it's, it's this idea of just being able to extend upon the, the content types, but it's, it's still fully compatible. How much of, you know, a configuration effort uh, does it take to, to get, get, for instance, to run click block? Sure. Um, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's difficult as a developer um, because things that seem quite obvious, you know, are not are not that obvious to other people. I mean, I would think, I, as I say, I use Windows and I use Linux. Um, you know, I would say you probably need some sort of ability to work with the command line uh, in Linux. But it's, I mean, it's it's quite simple. You don't need, you know, very many commands. Um, and the, the the documentation. It is really all there, you know. Once you once you've got a Linux uh, environment, even on your laptop, you know, it doesn't have to actually be a server. Um, you know, it's quite easy to install Geth. Um, you know, and then you, it's quite easy to install uh, the link blockchain configuration files, um, and that's pretty. That's pretty much it. Uh, the instructions. Yeah, everything's documented, and of course, the idea is to have native applications eventually for. Or Android, iOS, Windows. How many nodes do you have roughly? Uh, it's generally between ten and twenty nodes. 
Um, and the, the website, uh, just link-blockchain.org, will get you to the website, and then there, there's various subdomains. Um, uh, so at the moment, it just redirects to this documentation website. Um, but one thing I want to do quite soon is to um, just create a, um, a very nice kind of front page, just to uh, make it a bit more user-friendly. Um, and then there, there's some subdomains for, um, if you go to blog.link-blockchain.org, it goes to the, the blog on, on Medium, and then there's a stats page, and we have a, a block explorer, although that's soon to be updated with, uh, with the version that, that James is, is putting together. So you've got like your own get source code there, which you would download it. You, know, you, you, run, um, you run the stock um, get or the oh. stock hierarchy, but it has a configuration file. Right. So instead of connecting to the, the Ethereum main chain, sure. it, it connects to the So you've there. got all the get stuff in there, including the, the ice age and everything. <laughs> Yeah, so for those who aren't familiar with it, um, Ethereum has uh, a feature called the, the Ice Age. So the idea is that Ethereum gradually gets slower and slower and slower because they want it to stop working so that they can switch to proof of stake, um, and which I think is kind of a, a bad idea to like, force it to stop working. Um, and with, with parity, you can actually, in the configuration file, you can switch off the, the ice age. But with get, in the configuration file, you can. So if I wanted to have the ice age disabled and running in both parity and get, I would have to, to make a fork of get. And that means I then have, I then have the, the technical burden of maintaining a fork of get that will work with me. Um, so, bit like, there's another, like, the other Ethereum blockchain, such as, I think, Classic and Expanse, yeah. they have both kind of diffused the bomb. Um, so that is something I would definitely be wanting to do with, with Link at some point. So um, right now, I if I were to download um, the latest version of Get, for instance, and I would run that on, on your blockchain, it would include uh, uh, the, uh, the time bomb, meaning longer block times? Uh, yes, but because the, the link blockchain is considerably younger than the main Ethereum chain, so it doesn't make any difference yet. But in, in terms of, of, of syncing up, yeah. but in terms of the actual block times? Uh, in, in a year and a half, if we don't change it, then the block times will start to get slower. Uh, but I, I fully intend to, uh, to fix that problem before it happens. <laughs> They just have a Genesis key, so they all Genesis. Yeah, well, they, um, you know, there's like three different configuration files. So Parity is one system for configuration files, and then it used to be with, with GAT, there was one configuration file, and then you would also add in a lot of command line parameters, but then they added another configuration file to replace the command line parameters. Um, but it's, yeah, maybe you can control it entirely through um, either command line parameters or, or configuration files. Is there anyone or is there any kind of support for people who want to try that out of uh, Well, you know, you can join the, the Gitter channel or there's also uh, a Slack, a Slack group. So, or, you know, you can, you can contact me directly. You know, if anyone needs some assistance, we'd be more than happy to, to give you a hand. Yeah. Maybe you'll get a loading call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah, as I think as Jonathan said, I think as I said, I mean, you can still mine Link uh, on a, on a, with a CPU. Um, so, and, and that's very easy as well. I mean, all that you do is just a switch. Um, anyway, I'm not sure if it's in here. It's just a switch when you start get, you just literally say mine. Um, and that's it. You know, it'll start, it'll start mining for you. I read that you're compatible with general, right? The general mine. Sorry, with the genuine miner. Uh, yeah. Um, so we, we have. Um, can, you, can you bring up the, the mining page? Um, yeah. So yeah, if you scroll down, um, so we have instructions for for gen oil, um, and then I think um, someone else who got it to work with. Um, there's another. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we need to add more instructions, but this it, it works great with with Ken all of them. Yeah, uh, both for AMD and NVIDIA cards. So, um, any more questions? Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask another question. Um, <laughs> 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 That's what we did. Um, I find your user base very fascinating because you're specifically targeting people. But, um, a, uh, do not want to be censored, meaning they have a very strong opinion about something and be willing to pay for it. So I'm not team where you actually get money for content that is good and useful for users. Um, in this case, in like, um, they have to pay to broadcast. Um, so I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but I, I still want to hear from you what What happens when? I mean, censorship to a certain extent. Um, one extreme is horrible, and it's like the, the examples that you give. Um, but some form of censorship is good. Right, we don't want all child privacy being kicked out. We don't want child pornography online. Um, so, is there on the developer side? Do you have that sort of? I don't know. This is the radical term, right? But do you have those sort of kill switches mm -hmm. or, or um, so? Right. There's, there's no like. I don't have any control over what people publish. Yeah. Um, so one of the, the ideas behind IPFS is that everybody is responsible for what their computer is doing in terms of what it's storing and what it's sending out. Um, so one of the things you can do with the blockchain is um, there's various ways where you can collaboratively classify content. Um, so there's, there's some startups in the Ethereum space where maybe um, they want to, to get information into the blockchain for the purposes of a bank. For example, let's say you want to, you know, there's a, let's say there's a smart contract that is, is betting on who, who won the, the US election. So you can write that in a smart contract, but somehow the, the smart contract needs to know what the result was. And of course, you know, everyone in the world can be in agreement with like what, what was actually decided in the end. But if you have an authority giving that information to the smart contract, then that is, that kind of undermines the whole point of, of having a decentralized system, because then you're trusting this, uh, this one oracle to tell the truth to the smart contract. So the alternative is to have what's called a decentralized oracle. And what you can do is you can financially incentivize lots of people to tell the truth. So with something like who is the president of the United States, almost everybody is going to know the answer to that question. So if you, if you allow people to put in some money into the system, and then you ask them, like, who is the president of the United States? And then if they are in agreement with the majority of, of people, then they get paid a small amount of money. If they are, um, if their answer is not in agreement with the majority, then they, they lose their, their deposit. And so this is one way where you can uh, try to put information into the blockchain. So you could have a system where if a piece of content, you know, for all the content that's getting popular on Link, people want to be able to classify it to know whether or not they want to store it on their computer. You know, maybe they don't want to store certain content because it's illegal or it's, it's immoral, and so they just want to have it blocked. They don't want it, you know, on their device or being distributed from their device. But they can't check everything that's coming through. So you can get the, the community as a whole can, through a system of a decentralized oracle, can classify content. And then you would set up your computer to automatically, you know, say, if, if the community has decided that this is a certain piece of content, um, then that's, that piece of content will, will not be stored on your device. Um, of course, you know, some people are still going to be, uh, you know, storing and serving certain content that most people uh, would want to be available, um, but that's that's something you you can't really prevent, and that's also the same that's happening right right now with with the web as it is. Um, 
So that's uh, that's kind of my my answer is that um, like fundamentally, link is about like independent or in, in individual responsibility. So now you're confirming that there's no kill switch in any form. Oh, there, there's no there's no kill switch. I don't have any power. There's no sense. Yeah, everyone can choose their own filter bubble in terms of what they what they want to be doing. Yeah, what about attribution to the content that's published on the link blockchain? Is there anything that can bind it to a particular publisher, or is it decentralized as how not usual blockchains are? Well, in, in terms of the content type, you could certainly include information. You could say, well, I've, I've taken this image that was licensed in a certain way, and I've, uh, I've remixed it in a certain way, and I've produced another image. Um, but the, you know, the, the internet is fundamentally... Uh, a copying machine. So if, if a million people copy your uh, your song, there's not much you can do about it. But if uh, if one entity is taking what you've created and they're making a lot of money, then that's um, that's that's one entity you can then you can go after. But you can't you can't pre prevent piracy. You know, that's and not so much on the topic of piracy, but perhaps when someone writes something that another person doesn't like. Um, is, are there any possibilities of um, someone impersonating another person on the blockchain and things like that? Well, you know, you, you are in control of your account. So whenever you publish a piece of content, that is tied to your account. Okay. And um, unless someone gets hold of your your private key or, or your credentials, no one else can publish content that, that is coming from from you. Okay. What happens if they put in false information or false news and trying to influence the public on certain things that uh, maybe illegal or whatever is fake or whatever? How do you trace that person? You cannot trace it. Uh, well, you can't you can't trace the person, but um, someone can put in those things in. So it's well, up to the public to decide. Yeah, and it is true or not true. And anybody can decide anything, but I really think with, with the blockchain, we are going to have much better tools for for discovering like what what truth is. Because as a Westerner who comes to Asia, you know we we have. Uh, you know, one sort of concept of what the world is, and we come to Asia, and then everyone has like an entirely different opinion. Um, and so, actually, like discovering like what uh, what is reality is is quite difficult. It's just like I'm thinking of North Korea. You know, they yeah. they, they brainwash the whole population. So the guy used a blockchain to publish to audience, so people just believe what. So, so, so what, you know what I mean? One, so you, you mm -hmm. find some population are not so able to to what your thing to know what is the real real thing. So you can see in the round of world that some countries they're still in the dark, you know, you know what I mean? Even though there's internet or estimation can flow freely, but it's still a bit influenced. You know? So how do you prevent that? So what you say you can't prevent that. Um, like I, I fundamentally believe that empowering individuals to um, get all the information and make their own decisions is the is the best way to um, you know to know like what news is true and what 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 news is false. Um, but you you will get um, like people will become curators. There will be thought leaders. And you know, like most people on most issues, they um, you know, they just listen to someone that they trust to find out like, like what is happening or what their opinion should be. And of course, that will that will just be the same on. So, so what, what you see, like the WhatsApp, you know, a lot of news, a lot of news, it look like a real news. You know what I mean? So you have to check around, do a lot of checking, then read it all. This is the thing. You know? So you get a lot of things looking around. So I'm thinking there's certain population in society that you can easily enable them to do certain things. So to me, to me, decentralized this is so open that um, there's no censorship in certain things. Uh, it may destroy uh, uh, certain. I, I uh, think the, 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 the very, the very <laughs> best people at influencing public opinion are the, the mainstream media. They, they are the masters. Yeah, there is, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, so they make use, make use of the decentralized 
king to do but they, that thing as well. They, they, they already, you know, they, they <laughs> control the, the narrative on, on so much, you know, so they're, um, you know, I think they're not going to be excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that the idea is that you have reputation systems combined with this content today. Yeah, yeah, you, you, can, you can have something like a decentralized oracle to, to determine you know, what, what, what is true and then you can, you can connect facts together um, to, to create a wider, wider picture. So how would you set yourself aside from Steam? I'm sure you've heard of Steam, yeah. how they work. Uh, what are the key differences here? Well, you know, Steam is great because it's it's probably the most successful blockchain project there is. Um, but it is, um, you know, once you look into it, it is it's maybe like a little bit scammy. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and the other thing is, you can't you can't just keep inflating a currency to pay for content creation. You know, you can do that to an extent, but ultimately, um, you know, you, you need people paying real money into the system. Um, and, you know, because Link is, it's, a, it's on a general purpose smart contract platform, so there are many ways to, uh, to build gamification and monetization systems on, on the blockchain. And that, that process it has, has barely begun, I think. Okay. So um, you don't have too many concerns about building a mass of miners who will actually bootstrap your, your blockchain. Uh, well, the, the miners are key. Um, so we, we um, there's certain certain things are are essential. So we, we need to get into a wallet. We need to uh, get onto an exchange, and we need to improve the network security. And then these things all are all interconnected. Um, but on, on the other hand, because um, you know, if, if you make a balance transfer and someone reverses the the transaction, you know that that's real money that's gone missing. But if you publish a tweet and then someone uh, you know someone switches on the mining power and re reverses their tweet, that's not quite so bad. So in, in some respects, getting the the mining power is not so important. But in terms of getting on an exchange, it's it's vital because. Um, if people start sending, you know, a lot of links to an exchange, and then they, they buy another currency, they check out, and then they, they switch on their their bank of miners, and then reverse that uh, that transaction, then you know the, the exchange is not going to be happy. Um, so it's it is important to have a lot of a lot of miners, but I, I think um, uh, I, I think we can do that. Just ask, can your system be? Uh, well, you know, everything can can be hacked, but um, I'm working very hard to prevent that from from happening. Um, and because you know, with well, with the blockchain itself, you know, it's it's already running on Ethereum, so in that way, it's very well tested. But in terms of the smart contracts I'm writing, um, uh, you know, I, I could make a mistake and then something would go wrong. But because it's a separate blockchain, then you know, if necessary, you know, if, if I can't fix the problem, uh, we can always have a hard fork and, and fix it that way. You know. Question. Yeah. Um, so once you have your Twitter like um, platform established, who will be the first platform? Who who will advertise it to? What type of community? Just to have a general so idea. People of are talking about blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> Like a Steam community. <laughs> <laughs> so like a lot more of like blockchain related content when it first comes. Yeah. And yeah, maybe my holiday food. Oh, yeah. okay. Anything else? Anybody? Okay, well, um, Thank you all very much for for coming. So maybe we can give a round of applause to our other. <laughs>